Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I want to uh, start by apologizing for today's. Uh, you know, I was unable to come to the class, have our physical class, as you know, promised. I'm very sorry, I was in a meeting and I was hoping I would finish in time and meet up, but uh, I couldn't. So sorry. So I decided to to have the lectures in one line so that at least we can we can all be with at our convenient time. So our last lecture was on you know managerial function. Uh, today we are going to talk about today being our last lecture is going to talk about multinational corporation. So let me share my screen. Okay. So multinational companies or corporation, you know, uh, if you could remember initially when you started the, the course, there was a topic on uh, type of businesses where you talk about sole proprietorship, partnership, limited liability company and, and the rest. You know, all those companies, you know, are businesses, you know, uh, uh, you know, carrying out within the national borders in a country, you understand, even though a partnership could be at the international level, but most of the explanation then, we are, we are more on the domestic, you know, local businesses. So this, to this topic is going to talk about the international business, that is the business, or a company that, you know, transacts or conducts business, you know, transaction across national borders involving one uh, two or more countries <laughs> understand so the lecture is going to uh, center on the, 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 the function of a of an international manager as an international manager what is expected of you as far as management is concerned that is the aim of this lecture so uh, by way of introduction uh, one of the best way business is to reduce cost and grow beyond their domestic market is by going international. So by this, you know, it means, you know, one of the, you know, there are so many ways business used to grow. They can open new branch, they can go online, they can, you know, create variety of product, in, uh, product uh, they can expand their product line, like producing, you know, number of products from their existing products in order to grow. But the one better way of doing this is to go international. You understand? To go and create or open a branch or subsidiary or something of that nature in another country. You understand? So when business go international, they stand to get a lot of advantages that they cannot get operating in their domestic market. You know, by the time the business goes international, you know, it can it can it can serve a market beyond where it, it is, you know localizing like in country. Like for example, Dangote, uh, Dangote you know, uh, uh, cooperation is in many countries, African countries, you understand? That gives, you know, Dangote advantage of increasing his wealth because he is serving, you know, not only in Nigerian market, but other markets, you know, across Africa and even some part of Asia and, and, and the rest of the, the world, you understand? So that is, you know, giving, you know, Give him a lot of chances to 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 to, to duplicate and you know multiply his, his wealth. You understand. So due to globalization, globalization facilitated by the development in information technology. You know, globalization, globalization is the is the coming together of countries to become one as a result of you know development in ICT, as a result of you know good policies by, by the by the global leaders and what have you that, you know, facilitate, you know, easy transaction and what have you, you know, among countries in the world. You know, before, because of the distance barrier, because of the currency barrier, because of the so many issues, you know, it was very difficult for countries to transact internationally. But now, with our robust transportation system, with our fast internet services, with our good policies modern way of managing businesses you know countries you know find it very easy to transact a business 
In fact, an international business can be sealed or conducted in a single day. You understand? We have, we have all the, the, the internet and what have you. Right now, if you want to buy something, you can just go online and buy from Indonesia or anywhere in the world. You understand? Because of the, the, the speed provided by the internet and the, the, the efficiency and what have you. So now operating in two or more countries is even more easier than before. So what is uh, this multi, multinational uh, corporation or company? Multinational company is a company or corporation in the field of business or manufacturing, which acts in several countries and have employee far beyond the country of its creation, taking into account characteristics of national market of foreign countries. You understand? Another one says it simply means a company that operates in its own country as well as in other countries around the world. It maintains central office located in, the, in one country, mostly home country. You understand like you know we have a lot of you know businesses that are that, that, that come from a lot of countries all over you understand we are going to see some examples so which coordinate it maintains central office located in one country mostly home country which coordinates the management of all other offices such as administrative branches or factories example of multinational companies in nigeria are unilever mtn nestle chevron mobile Google, Procter and Gamble, Dangote Group, and so many others. You know, all these are international or multinational company because they reside or operate in more than one country. You understand? So, characteristics. What are the features? What are the common features? You know, attributed to this kind of a, a multinational corporation. What are the things which, if you see or observe, you can be able to say that this company is a multinational company. Number one, very high asset turnover and turnover. Very high asset and turnover. You know, they, they sell a large, you know, in bulk. You understand? They make they make turnover or sales in, in millions or billions of, of dollars and onera, depending on the currency in which the transaction is is, uh, is 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 conducted. You understand? They have network of branches because they, they operate in not in modern, not modern, uh, in modern two countries, many countries, and in each country they have wide network of branches. Like for example, Nestle in Nigeria have, you know, has a lot of you know warehouses and, and an operating office in Lagos, Kano, and, and many other big big cities in Nigeria. So even even within the country, they have a lot of branches, and they also have you know in many countries in the world. And then control. They control large amount of money and number of large number of employees and uh, resources and assets across many countries. And then continued growth. They, this company, you know, they target a country and then go after another and another countries. You understand? So they are always, you know, on the look of opportunity where they can roll out a new branch or new business in, in a particular country. They have sophisticated technology, you know, because of their, their wealth, you know, most multinational corporations are very rich companies. They invest in technology, modern way of doing things, using softwares, using robot machines and what have you. You understand? And then they have right skills. They also spend a lot of money in training their workers on the current, you know, management skills and way of doing things within the organization. So they have better way of doing things compared to local companies who mostly depend on uh, uh, labor intensive, manual way of doing things because they have you know, very little capital to invest in technology and machines and what have you. And then possible marketing and advertising, they, because of their wealth, they can spend you know, money in, in very appealing advertisement. You know, last week we talked about marketing you know, where we see a lot of promotional, you know, uh, ways through which company markets their products. So this kind of a multinational corporation, you know, have money that they spend on advertisement in order to gain market share in, in the country they are targeting. And then good quality products because of their uh, technology, because of their uh, research and development and, and what have you, they have qualitative products 
compared to the locally produced you know, product. And in such a way, we have market advantage than the local businesses. And that is why, you know, most of the, 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 the like, for example, in Nigeria, most people, you know, prefer to buy made in other countries good or services than, you know, locally produced things. You understand? We, we saw the case of rice in Nigeria where government has to close the border in order to, you know, force people to buy the, the locally you know, produced rice in Nigeria. So reason for being multinational cooperation. Reason for being uh, multinational cooperation. There are reason why there are many reasons why many companies want to become multinational cooperation. Here are some of them. Number one, access to lower production cost. You know, if you go to China, you see a lot of you know American companies. Not only American, you know, many companies from many countries. You know, establishing you know their their manufacturing plants or production you know company uh, plant in, in China. Why? Because China has you know low cost of production in terms of labor cost, you know raw material and what have you. So a lot of you know businesses, multinational company, you know, find it very easy to 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 go there. And not only China, most African countries they have cheap labor and and you know raw material and what have you. And there is abundant market and what have you. So because of that, you know, the, the, the all this multinational corporation, you know, you know, make an you know effort to to go you know, to target those countries, and then proximity to target international markets. You know, being in Nigeria, you can easily you know transact or, or go international. You know, in, in, in some of our neighboring countries like Chad, you know, Cameroon, Ghana, and or Benin, and all this. You understand the opportunity to to look at the international market can can give somebody can, can make somebody find it easy to go uh, into into business in those countries or roll out a branch or something of that nature. You understand, and then avoidance of tariffs. You know, if you be you know exporting your good or services to other countries, you know, at the national borders, you know, there is tariffs, custom duties, and what have you. Which you need to pay in order for your good or, or whatever to, to be uh, taken into that country. So, in order to avoid this kind of a payment, which you know adds to their cost of production, it will be better, more you know, economical and advantageous for this company to create a plant in their target country so that they will avoid you know, all these tariffs and what have you. Because most of these countries you know, are after you know, a kind of a foreign direct investment. You know, they, they always you know, make an effort to entice people to come and invest in, in their countries, like Nigeria. You know, Nigerian government has been trying, you know, to, to, to entice you know, other countries to come and invest in Nigeria. So that, that gives, you know, those countries more advantage to avoid tariffs and what have you by, by you know, setting up their, their companies and what have you in our country. Then approaches to building multinational companies. You know, there are many ways, you know, uh, for people, you know, normally go international. So as, as, a, as, as, as a marketing, as, as, a, as an international manager, you can use any of these uh, uh, approaches. Number one is exporting. Exporting, you know, is, is a process where you produce in your country, like Nigeria, and then take the Google service into another uh, countries market is called exporting. It is it is it is isn't enough to call a company that export a product to more than one country, a multinational company. They need to maintain an operation in other countries and must make a foreign direct investment there. Even though you know mere exporting your good or service into another country doesn't qualify you as a multinational company, you need to you know have an operational you know output in that country like a plant where you produce the goods or, or service in that country, you understand, and make some reasonable investment in terms of infrastructure, in terms of machines, in terms of technology and what have you, for you to be qualified as an international company. But this could be a starting point, you know, as, as an international manager or as, as, as a manager, you know, as far to go international, you can start by exporting your goods so that you create the market in your target country before you even go and you know set up the a, a, a branch 
for subsidiary or, or anything of that nature. And then we have Lassenjo, Lassenjo agreement. This approach allows the foreign firm to enter manufacture, to enter to either manufacture or sell products, or the right to place a brand name or symbol on a product. You know, this is an agreement where a licensing agreement is, is a process where you know uh, somebody you know produces you know another company's product or service in another location. Like for example, a company in America can license some of its product or service to somebody in Nigeria to produce. You know, by may you know going into that you know agreement, you know somebody is is building on his multinational you know agenda. You understand? Like for example, Destiny One. You know, Destiny you know has a lot of you know product and services uh, for children and what have you. You understand? Which are which, which are licensed to other companies to produce in many countries all over, you understand? And this approach provides more control than an export sell, as a firm can require that certain specification be met, yet it is still not the manufacturer, manufacturer in the foreign market. So the, these two, the exporting and less, less, less angel agreement, you know, are not, uh, cannot qualify one to be a multinational company. But it could be as a starting point. You understand? You can export. You can license some of your product or service for somebody to produce in Ghana, Chad, or some some of the uh, African countries. We used to have an age. You understand? To have an experience of what happens there as far as marketing and what I mean is concerned. So the next one is multinational approach. With this approach, a firm. A firm is willing to make a substantial commitment to a foreign market. Normally, product or service are modified to meet the foreign market demand. And in many cases, substantial fixed investment are made in plan and equipment. International approach. So this is where someone, you know, you know, partially or fully go international, but, uh, national, international. You understand? You know, in export, you transport. You, 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 you move your good or service to that country. But in lesson so you produce some of somebody's product or you allow somebody in another country to produce some of your product or service in that country as if you are the one, you know, operating. But here you make some reasonable investment in terms of uh, uh, equipment, in terms of plants, you know, and what have you in that country to create something like a branch or subsidiary that will be producing the good or service you want to market in that country. So the most common ways to become a multinational firm are to form joint venture or globally strategic partnership or to establish a wholly owned subsidiary. So we are going to see them one after the other. Number one is joint venture. Joint venture occur when companies forms a partnership with a foreign firm to develop new products or to give each other access to local markets. You know, sometimes, you know, individually, companies cannot be able to, to, to assess international markets. But when you partner with another company, you can be able to, you know, match strengths and produce product or service that you can, you know, compete in the international market. Or you can give each order access to local markets. Like, for example, a, a, a company in, in Ghana, let's say Nestle in Ghana, and, you know, Cadbury or Obombita in, in Nigeria, you understand? Those, these two companies, you know, can allow each other, you know, their local markets. Like Nestle in Ghana can allow, you know, Bombita in Nigeria or Cadbury to produce some of it, to send some of it brought into, into Ghana. And that company will help them to market it and sell it in that country. And the same thing happened to, to, to Cadbury company in Nigeria. You know, they will take, some of the product are from, from, from Nestle in Ghana and market it in Nigeria and sell them in Nigeria. By so doing, you know, each of them give, you know, each other access to local markets. And that can give them an experience of what a feel of what the international market is all about. And that can allow them to, to easily go into international markets. And then global strategy partnership are much larger than a simple joint venture. Two firms join together and make a long-term commitment in the form of time and investment to develop products 
or services that will dominate world markets. You know, sometimes, you know, for a company to compete with a very large company, you have to strategically, you know, combine resources together to produce a product, a very strong product that will compete favorably with a very strong, you know, market, uh, world market leader. You understand? It's called global strategic partnership. So it's another way of going into uh, international. This approach does not modify products for a particular market, but develops a single product market strategy that can be utilized in all market in the hope of dominating the whole market for the products. And then we have wholly owned subsidiary. Occur when a firm purchases either controlling interest or all of a foreign firm. Often the subsidiary firm is given considerable freedom in terms of how to operate in the foreign market and heavy use of foreign managers and employees is very common. In a wholly owned subsidiary, it's a process where, a situation where a company, you know, you know, purchase some companies in, in, the, in the target country and then, you know, uh, change them as I am using them to produce some of the products or use the company to market some of its products in that country. So in most situations, the subsidiary firm is given considerable freedom in terms of how to operate in the foreign market and heavy use of foreign managers and employees is very common. You understand? And then vertically integrated wholly on subsidiary. So in addition to wholly on subsidiary, you know, also the distribution channel is being it is being occupied or, or owned by the by, by the company that is in the uh, multinational you know market. Again, the main emphasis is on dominating a Walmart worldwide product or service area with a single product market strategy. The true global products are very difficult to develop, and it is very even more difficult to dominate all global markets. So the major differences between the two is that in, in your only one subsidiary, you only own the subsidiary that use the local maybe distribution channel retailers and what have you to distribute the products. But in the second one, vertically integrated, only on subsidiary. In addition to the subsidiary, you also own the distributors, the retailers, and what have you. It's like a company owning all the distribution system in the country in order to, to, to assess the, 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 the end, end users of the product or service. So international business environment. So as an international you know, manager, you, know, you will face a lot of challenges while you know, going international or transacting across uh, national borders. So it is very important for someone to know about some factors that may likely influence your reporting situation as an international manager. So managing a business in a foreign country requires managers to deal with a large variety of cultural and environmental differences. There are a lot of differences between your country and your country of, uh, of type or uh, business. If you are in, in doing business or having a company or a branch or subsidiary in Ghana, the kind of you know policies from government and what have you that are here in Nigeria may be quite different from what we may, we may find in, in Ghana. So as, a international, as an international manager, you need to be aware of, of the differences so that you can, be, you can be ready for what it takes to, to, to operate a business in that country. So as a result, international manager must continually monitor um, the political, legal, social, cultural, economic, and technological environment of the country, of, of his country of interest in order to be able to, to, to operate you know, uh, efficiently. So political environment. Uh, political environment can, can foster or hinder economic development and direct investment. This environment is ever changing. As, as examples, the political and economic philosophy of a nation leader may change overnight. You know, this factor is very important. Why? Because it is highly volatile because of the nature of our, uh, of our politics and what have you. You know, overnight, a policy can, can change that will affect international business cooperation in your country of interest. So it's very important for one to, one to, to closely pay attention to this political uh, factor. 
uh, an example, the political and economic philosophy of financial leader may change overnight. Like for example, before the ban of, of, of border rice importation into this country, people were really importing rice and nobody, you know, expected a certain ban of, of, of rice importation and then our president, you know, just stop it overnight. And that, you know, seriously affect, you know, people in that kind of uh, business, you understand? So things can happen abruptly anytime. So the ability of a nation's government, which frequently rests on the support of the people can be very volatile, constantly changing. Political consideration affect international business daily as government enact tariffs like taxes on, on raw materials, on imported goods and what have you, machines and what have you. You know, the kind of taxes you know, you know, can, can, can change. It can be raised to the very highest level overnight. Quarters, that is the limit of, 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 of goods and services that can come into a country or go outside the country, can also be increased or reduced. And then in you know, stopping or blocking some, some product or services into a particular country. And other type of restriction in response to political event. You know, sometimes you know a country, you know, you know, embark on some protectionist, you know, effort in order to protect the infant industry or to develop its economy. You know, some countries, you know, close their borders in order to allow, you know, their local companies to to survive and develop. So all these policies can can affect an international manager. So as an international manager, you need to always be on on the alert and ready to, 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 to use your strategy in case you know, the situation changes. And then we have legal environment. You know, many countries, government have put forth a number of laws that regulate activities of firm engaging international trade. You know, in, in our country, you know, there are so many things we take for granted. You know, our laws and what have you are very, you know, to some extent, very loose, you understand? So the kind of you know restrictions, the kind of you know uh, principles and what have you, you may find in other countries may be quite different from what is in, in your country, like Nigeria. So uh, as an international manager, you will be ready to to confront a very distinct you know legal environment, very fierce and very orderly you know legal environment. However, outside the national borders, companies are likely to find that the law of the other nations differ from those of their own. Many legal rights that companies take for granted do not exist in other countries. A firm doing business abroad must understand and obey the law of the first country. You understand? In some countries, the acceptance of rights or pay off is, is illegal. It's illegal. In other countries, the acceptance of rights and pay off may not be illegal but they are the normal way of doing things, you understand? Like our country, you know, taking pride and, you know, pay off in order to get things, you know, happen or done in our country is, is a common practice, but this don't happen in other countries, you understand? So you have to know, know this as an international manager. In addition, some countries have copyright and patent laws that are less restrict restricted than those in, in, in US and some other developed countries. But here, you know, most of the our artists, you know, who have, you know, intellectual properties and what have you, are always on outcrying about piracy, you know, and all this, because we have, we have no law in place that protect them, you know, securely from piracy and what have you. But this kind of a thing don't happen in, in other countries, you understand? They have very, you know, a very sophisticated, a robust, you know, legal system that checks and, and makes sure all these things don't happen, you understand? So person, you know, aspiring to go to these kind of countries should be ready to, to face this kind of a normal thing. China, for example, has recently been treated with the severe threat sanctions because of the history of allowing American goods to be copied or counterfeited there. Even in our country, how many you know, business people go to China to bring in fake and some standard products and attach some, some, some standard product level on them? You understand? With the China connival and what have you, because of our loose legal system, 
Presumably, if our legal system is very strong and, and working, you know, all these things will not happen, you understand? So companies have to find a way to protect their products and services in the country they are targeting. So for somebody who is coming to Nigeria, we find it very, very, very <laughs> I don't know how to put it, very easy to deal with, you understand? Or like somebody who is you know, going from Nigeria to, to, to all these developed countries, you find it very, 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 very strict compared to what you are used to in your country. So economic environment. Managers must monitor currency, infrastructure, inflation, interest rate, wages, and taxation in assessing the economic environment in foreign countries. The business must pay attention, particular attention to the following four areas. Average income level of the population, tax structure, inflation rate, fluctuating exchange rate. These are very important, you know, for an, for an international manager to, to be observant of average income level of the population so that you will have an idea of you know the, 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 the economic the income level among people in the country so that you will know exactly what kind of product or service you offer to them you understand task structure you know, that will help you to ascertain your revenue and expend uh, an expenditure cost so that you will know that the investment in that country is worth undertaking or otherwise inflation rate from creating extent rates very discouraging, you understand. You know, for people find it very, you know, very cheap, you understand, to come in into Nigeria with their foreign something when our foreign extent is, is, is inflating. But one of our uh, countries with reasonable, you know, foreign exchange, you know, you know, it would be, would be costly for, for someone to go into uh, international business, you understand. So it's very important you consider these factors. Then social cultural environment. Cultural differences, which can be very subtle, are extremely important. An organization that enters international marketplace and virtually any level must make learning the foreign country's cultural taboos to offer cultural practices a high priority. It's very important. You know, culture, the total way of people's life is very important because you may come from different backgrounds, from different cultural backgrounds, where what you, you, you consider as as, 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 as as local may not be local in, in the country you are targeting. So you have to know about their local customs, religion, and what have you, so that you can properly transact business with them. If a business fails to understand the cultural method of doing business, grave on misunderstanding and complete lack of trust may occur between you and the, the, the people in that country. Then technological environment. Technological environment contains the innovations from robotics to cellular phones that are rapidly occurring in all types of technology. Before a company can expect to sell a product in another country, the technology of the two countries must be compatible. You understand? You cannot target a country with something that they don't understand. You understand? Or something that is beyond their assumption level. You understand you know most of the, these companies that are coming into nigeria they, they, they use some moderate you know technology in order to operate you know effectively in our country some of them if they are going to deploy their you know up-to-date technology you know it will be very costly for them because they have to train people and, and all this in our country before they can be able to use the technology so functions of international manager Global competition has forced businesses to change how they manage at home and abroad. The increased rate of change, technological advances, shorter product life cycles, and high speed communication are all factors that contribute to these changes. The new management approach focuses on establishing a new communication system that features a high level of employee involvement. So just like the, 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 the normal you know, manager, um, uh, functions, you know, international manager, you know, also carry out this, you know, uh, similar functions. But the only difference is that uh, the international manager, you know, you know, conduct his function in a more, more, you know, diverse, you know, business environment than the one you know. Therefore, each of the five basic management functions must change when operating in a foreign market. So planning, 
The first stage of international planning is to decide how to do the business globally, whether to export, to enter into licensing agreement or joint ventures, or to operate as a multinational cooperation facilities in foreign countries. You understand? To develop focus, goals, and plan for international activity, the manager must monitor environment very closely. Key factors include political instability. You know, you measure political instability by the rate of violence and all this in a country. You know, a country where you have high level of kidnapping, you know, Boko Haram issues, banditry and all this, you know, you hardly see foreign investors coming in. You understand? Because nobody is willing to lose his investment. Then currency stability. You know, we have witnessed, you know, you know, or remitting rises in the declining value of, of, of our Nera in relation to foreign currencies, which is very discouraging. Competition from governments because of protectionist, you know, policies and what have you, you know, government is, is, is also causing a lot of challenge to, to international, you know, businesses. Pressure from government, threatened and trademark protection and intense competition with other countries and what have you. And then organizing international businesses must be organized so that they can adapt to cultural and environmental differences. No longer can organizations just put carbon copies or clone of themselves in a foreign country. You have to adapt. You understand? You have to you have to learn how people you know, do things in that country, how things are happening, and then try to 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 to, to change yourself and and acclimatize. You understand? International pen must be organized so that it can be responsive to foreign customers, employees, and suppliers. An entire firm may even be organized as one giant worldwide company that has several divisions. Then staffing. Uh, because obtaining a good staff is so critical to the success of any business, the hiring and development employee must be done very carefully. Management must be familiar with the uh, country's national level laws. You understand? Because you need to know what are the minimum wages and all this in a country before you even embark on hiring people so that you pay them uh, what is reasonable, reasonably you know, often in that country. Then it must be decided how many managers and personnel to hire from the local level of course and whether to transfer home this personnel, depending on the level of skills. You know, most situation, in most situation, you know, skill gaps, you know, call for bringing in your people, your personnel, maybe from your home country to the, to the, to the country you are targeting. You understand? Because of the skill gap. But when the skills are all available, there's no need for you to bring many people, maybe some handful of people to just manage and then employ most of the workers. For example, US firms are better off hiring local talent and using only a few key expatriates in most cases because the cost of assigning US based employee to positions overseas can be quite expensive. But in the other way around, you know, you know, uh, other people, you know, can find it very cheap, you know, to hire people in, in Nigeria and some other, you know, African countries because of the cheap labor and what have you in those countries. Then directing. Cultural differences make directing function more difficult for the international manager. Employee attitude toward work and problems have been differ by country. You know how employee behaves in our country, light comments, you know, negative attitude toward work and all this. You know, and tell you know a lot of hard work on the part of the international manager. So depending on the kind of country you are operating in, you have to, you know. You know, you know, you know, fight with these issues. Language barriers also create communication difficulties. To minimize problems arising from cultural differences, organizations are training managers in the course cultural management techniques. Or cultural management trains managers to interact with several cultures and to value diversity. To be accommodative, you understand, so that you can be able to operate, you know, you know, harmoniously with the with the, with the people in the country. Of your interest. Then controlling geographic dysfunction and distance, language barriers, and legal restrictions complicate the controlling functions. Meetings, reporting, and inspections are typically part of the international control system. In many countries, bonuses 
pensions, holidays, and vacation days are legally mandated and considered by many employees as right. You understand? Particularly powerful union exists in many, many parts of the world and their demand is street managers freedom to operate. So you have to, you know, have knowledge of all this in a country of your interest so that you can be able to operate effectively. Otherwise, you will have issues with the workers union. So model of the multinational cooperation. Now the following are the different model of multinational cooperation. So by model, we are talking about the format, the nature of how you are going to operate in the international you know, markets. So we have centralized. In a centralized model, companies put up an executive headquarters in their home country and then build various manufacturing plants and production facilities in other countries. Hmm? Just like Dangote, you know, group of companies, they have their headquarters in Nigeria, and then they have their manufacturing plants, you know, across Africa and other countries in the world. So it is most, it, it, it's most important advantage is being able to avoid tariffs and important quarters and take advantage of lower production costs. You understand? If you are going to be exporting the goods, you know, there is issue of tariffs and all this. But if you are going to set up the factory in the country, you mean will minimize the issue of tariffs, payment, and whatever. You understand? That is an impact. That is what most of those countries are encouraging, foreign direct investment. And you may also take advantage of lower production costs in terms of labor costs, in terms of access to raw material and all this. And then regionalized. The regionalized model states that a company keeps its headquarters in one country that supervises a collection of offices that are located in various countries. Well, like the centralized model, this regionalized model includes subsidiaries and affiliates that all report to the headquarters. You know, in the centralized, you only have your headquarters in your home country and manufacturing plant in other countries to be manufacturing only. But in the regionalized, you have everything in, in other countries. You understand? And then the last one is multinational. In the multinational model, a parent company operate in their home country and put up subsidiary in different countries. The difference is that subsidiaries and affiliates are more independent in their operations. So this is all we can take from this. Thank you for your attention. So thank you everyone. This is all we can take on this. I'm very sorry for not coming to the class today. I hope this lecture will suffice or complement what we lost today. So thank you. If there is any question, you can reach out to me through my email or through uh, my WhatsApp number. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm expecting your, your questions.